What's going on guys? Zuko back with another Shadowlands video. How's everybody doing? Hope you're doing really well. I hope you got a coffee. Go get a coffee. Sit back, relax. We're not going to do um, any big gameplay stuff in this video. This is going to be a, a little quicker video, hopefully. And I'm going to be talking about the Wowhead like weekly wrap-up. So I want to talk about all the news that we've gotten on Wowhead lately. So there's been a bunch of different articles in the past, you know, three, two or three weeks, honestly. But I'm going to compile a bunch of important ones here that I think I want you to look at. And we're going to talk about them. I'm just going to run through them and let you guys know what's going on in the news for 9.2. Heading into 9.2, obviously this is all PTR stuff. So we're going to talk about uh, Zareth Mortis flying requirements got changed, uh, tier set gear and how you can acquire it, conduits on where they kind of drop from, and that's really important for us because of how powerful conduits are going into 9.2. Um, what was the other one? Oh yeah, there's a there's one there's a post on chain harvest and splintered elements and Elysian dirge, which is the conduits and chain harvest. The, the two conduits for the Necrolord and and, and uh, Kyrian, we're going to talk about those. They got buffed. Very important. Then we're going to talk about the encrypted affix. And I want to um, spend a couple minutes on the encrypted affix and just talk through it and let you guys understand it a little bit better. And also, um, we're going to uh, talk about the new changes. There were some recent changes to the encrypted affix, which is very exciting. So um, let's get into it. Let's switch over here to the... Video review, here we go, we're good to go. Okay, so we'll get to that in a minute. Let's start with flying. So what did they talk about? Flying, um, used, it used to be like, it was gonna take a long time to unlock flying in the zone and it looks like it's gonna be a lot quicker now. Like I think it was gonna be maybe potentially months or like a month to do it. And now it's down to two weeks. So on the latest P uh, patch 9.2 PTR build, the requirements for flying in Xerath Mortis have changed. A new achievement was added. It should take two weeks to earn Xerath Mortis flying. The new achievement added to the PTR is Unlocking the Secrets, which requires you to complete certain tasks around Xerath Mortis. This achievement, uh, this is uh, this achievement and its progression is account wide, which we already knew that, but it's very very cool. So this is what you have to do: Unlocking the Secrets. Looks like six different things. We'll get into them here. This is pretty standard for flying, right? If you've unlocked flying in past expansions. Uh, below we have broke down all the achievements. TLDR, all the achievements but means to an end can be obtained not long after stepping foot into Xerath Mortis. The last achievement requires doing the 9.2 campaign, which should be obtainable at week three of patch 9.2. Okay, so week, take two weeks to earn. I don't know what the, anyway, maybe week two or week three instead of like a couple months. So let, let's see what you have to do. So you need to, let me move this over here. Oh no, you guys can't see it, right? I gotta flip that. It doesn't matter. We'll do it later. Here we have to do, exploring Xerath Mortis. Um, so you just have to explore the whole zone. That's pretty standard. These are all the different places you have to explore. That's pretty normal for this. Uh, curious collections, discover five hidden treasures. It looks like there's about 25 of them there, maybe. Um, maybe 30. So I've been running around the zone quite a bit, actually, Xerath Mortis, and um, there, there's lots of treasures to find. Like, it, it, it's pretty awesome. Like, even just in the small sections in here, like, everywhere you go, there's treasures to find. There's, like, lost treasures all over the place. Some of them are harder to get to. Some of them are easier. But generally speaking, um, they're, they're quite easy to find. So that's, that should take no problem at all. Um, he says this is easily doable on day one. You can check the achievement with this if you want to. That, that, that's actually an achievement in the game. So you can track it that way. Uh, Path to Enlightenment completes three side quests in Xerath Mortis. I think I have these up right now. Let's take a look really quick. I think... Oh, that's Bastion. Oh, 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 oh. Here we go. So see these arrows here? Step into the ring. Oh, no, that's something different, actually. Patterns within patterns is the weekly. Anyway, there are side quests that you can get in Haven in particular... And I think I already did one of them potentially, but you can see there's only like three of them you have to complete. That's not going to take any time at all. You can see them here. Small pet problems. There's going to be people in Haven. There you go. Two of them are in Haven, and one of them is in Pilgrim's Grace. So you can get those done really quickly, and then you're done this part of it. Tales of the Exile. Read the volumes of Firim in Exile found in Xerath Mortis. So Firim is like our new kind of guide in Xerath Mortis. He's one of the first people you meet when you walk into the zone. And he becomes like a pretty important NPC that you have to interact with. So it looks like you have to run around the zone and find like pages of a book, uh, of his book. And that's, uh, I'm not sure where those are. I'm sure somebody will like have some add-on you can get that tells you where those are eventually. 
And then Adventures in Zerth. Mortals complete 10 of the following special encounters. There are tons of these things. Look, there's probably 40 of these guys hanging around. So these are... You have to kill 10 rares. Um, only one rare cannot be currently encountered on day two. So this achievement should be easily completable day one. So you can kill any of these. They're saying that only one out of these 40 rares is like not available on day one. So the chances of you being able to complete this should be very easy on day one. And then means to an end is the storyline means to an end, which they're saying you can get done by week three. So pr so I guess by week three of the new patch, you can have flying. That's very fast. Like comparatively speaking to other expansions and stuff. I mean, we didn't even get flying in um, in Corthia, right? In the latest zone in, in our in Shadowlands. We didn't even get flying. So um, this zone, you can get flying within about three weeks. That's like, that's pretty incredible. That's the, And it doesn't look like it's that difficult to do. If you're just logging in every day for like an hour or maybe a couple hours... Or if you're going to binge log in like at the, on the weekend or something, you can easily get this stuff done. So that's actually really exciting. Um, uh, means to an end is chapter 5 of the 9.2 campaign. It's only the achievement that cannot be completed on day 1. This should be completable by week 3. So it looks like week 3, as soon as patch 9.2 drops, three weeks after that, you can get flying. That's what I'm understanding here. So that's that one. Very cool. Look excited for that. Let's move on to tier set gear. Only thing I want to really mention here is that this is a really nice buff to all of us. Tier set gear can appear in all nine of the great vault slots in 9.2. So that's really, really cool because it means you can do PvP, you can do Mythic Plus, and you can, of course, do the raid. Or if you don't, you, know, you could do all three. For people who are hardcore and they want to do all three, that's fine. But if you're really like a PvPer in particular and you want to get the new tier set bonus, you can still get it. And I think that's really good. That's really, really exciting. Now, um, it doesn't look like this feature is implemented yet on the PTR, so it's unclear what the drop chance will be. We'll find out more once this actually is tested on the PTR, assuming can, uh, but assuming it can replace the item in any box, this means it'll be even harder to get max item level Mythic Plus Trinket with this tier, such as file of Putrefication or Inscribital Right, because the pool is going to get diluted with Tazavesh gear now coming in and the tier pieces. So, so, um... You know, that'll be tough. Get your trinkets now, basically. <laughs> if you want to get those big trinkets like file of putrefication and stuff or IQD, then go get it down now. However, if they're basically saying that you're going to have a really high chance of getting tier set um, pieces uh, just doing your weekly activities. So the only other ways to get tier set pieces are raiding and then the creation catalyst, which they talked about. You can you can essentially craft tier set pieces. Now, we don't know much about this yet. It's not on the PTR yet, so we'll get to this later. But you can essentially... You can do PvP, Mythic Plus, or Raiding, and at the end of the week, you'll have a chance to get a tier set piece on your chest in your big vault. You can also just go and do Raiding, and they drastically increase the drop rate of tier set pieces in particular. The loot coming out of the raid is going to be like double or triple what it what all other raids have been in the past. Like The amount of loot coming out of this new raid is going to be insane. So... Even if you step into like LFR or normal and, and do a couple bosses, you have a pretty good chance of getting a tier set bonus. And then this new creation catalyst, which we don't know about yet, but you can essentially craft tier set pieces. And I don't know what resources you're going to need, but what I do know is there's another post that talks about the creation catalyst saying that the ability to craft tier set pieces is capped, I think, like weekly or something again we don't know everything about this yet but they're basically saying you can't just get the creation catalyst open and just craft 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 and make like 50 pieces of tier set gear and then you're done they don't want you to be able to do that so there is a little bit of a limitation on this in terms of crafting but you could essentially go do a couple raid bosses maybe get lucky and get a piece at the end of the week maybe you get another piece from your vault um and then you could go craft one other piece with the creation catalyst and you'd have like Three out of four already. So I think the speed with which we're going to acquire tier set pieces in 9.2 will actually be quite quick. And if you're sort of engaging with the normal content of the game, I think it's going to be pretty quick to get these. So that's tier set stuff. Let's move into covenants really quickly. I just want to say, this is a pretty quick one. It just says in 9.2, rare covenant conduits will drop from Mythic Plus Dungeons, making them much easier to acquire. This is new. We do not have this on live servers right now. Since the beginning of the expansion, the four Covenant Conduits for each class have only dropped... This is the just the Covenant Conduits, sorry. Let me make sure I'm clear about that. Just the Covenant-specific conduits, conduits, which we'll get to in a second. 
those Covenant conduits only dropped from World Bosses and Sire. So in Patch 9.1, everybody went to Corthia because nobody ran Castle Nathrian anymore, right? So in 9.2, you'll be able to get um, Kyrian, like they're showing you can get, they'll drop from one Mythic Plus dungeon each week. So I guess for Kyrian, it's the Necrotic Wake dungeon. If you go Necrolord, it's Plaguefall. Night Fae is going to be Mists, and Venthyr is Hulls. So you can get the new like 262 conduits or whatever the level is going to be when you get it. It'll be something like that um, from these dungeons. You can go get them right away, which is huge because of this stuff. We'll get to the chain harvest in a second, but look at this. Um, <clears throat> this down here, Elysian Dirge, the Vesper Totem conduit, which now we just realized you'll be able to get from Necrotic Wake. Maybe on like day one, you could go get this. If you're running Kyrian, Excuse me. This is going up by almost uh, 50%, which is absolutely bonkers. 60% at level 1 to 100%. And then it just scales up. Let me show you in game. Let's look at this conduit for me in game. Uh, let's change back to Kyrian really quick. Yeah, 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 yeah. Look at this, guys. Look at this conduit here. Elysian Dirge, now this is enhanced because I'm level 80, but just the base amount. This is item level 200. This is only a 200 item level conduit. I don't know why it's upgraded. I thought I upgraded them all. Anyway, the point is 132% more damage from your Vesper Totem um, against the target that's closest to it. So on like a single target boss, this is doing so much more damage now than it used to. This is already live on the PTR. That's why I'm looking at it. So... Um, I have 132%, right? So let's go back to this for a second. So I'm right here. That's where I am. You guys are going to be like probably here already. Like some of you might already be like here and at the 96% mark. And then as we push into the expansion, it's going to get crazy. The numbers just get crazy for Vesper Totem. So this conduit is getting massively buffed, which is insane because like Vesper Totem was already really good for Resto Shaman. I hear all the PvP guys crying in the comments because they're just like... It's already really good in PvP, but for PvE in particular, and Mythic Plus on bosses, like single target bosses, where this is this is what this conduit's here for, you're getting a massive boost in damage, which is really, really cool. This is also very cool. We're going to look at this later today. I'm going to do a video later today on the new Necrolord build that I was looking at, so stay tuned for that. This is getting buffed by 2%. That's great. That's that's actually, uh, that's fine. Not a huge buff. Here's an interesting buff. This is really cool for Elemental Shaman. They're now making Chain Harvest generate three sta uh, three Maelstrom per target damaged or healed, right? So <clears throat> that's really cool. Let's go back into here. Let me run over to Draven and talk to him for a sec. So I'm going to get this uh, get the ability back. So you can see the tooltip down here. Read this, guys. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let me move this here. Okay, let's read that. It says it right at the bottom. This is already live. For each target critically struck, Chain Harvest cooldown goes down by 5 seconds, and then it now generates 3 Maelstrom per target damaged or healed. So that, that means you can get 30 Maelstrom, right? 5 targets damaged, 5 targets healed. If you're in a Mythic Plus, let's say, that's very easy to pull off, right? All the time. So for Elemental Shaman, this essentially can get you 30 Maelstrom, which is cool. That's not bad at all. Chain A Chain Lightning gets you 20, right? If you hit 5 targets, 4 times 5 is 20. So you could do like a Chain Lightning into Chain Harvest or Chain Harvest into Chain Lightning, and you would almost have 60, you'd have 50 Maelstrom, which is very close to Earthshock or um, Earthquake. So this is just a nice quality of life. It's a good little buff for Chain Harvest for Elemental Shaman in particular. Enhancement Shaman, of course, loves Chain Harvest because we can juice it with our Maelstrom weapon stacks, but Elemental didn't really have any interactions. Now we do. So this is very cool. Cool little quality of life. I like it. Um, nothing wrong with that at all. Okay, that's that stuff there. Again, this conduit is insane. All conduits for Enhancement Shaman are insane moving into 9.2. So getting your hands on the con like they're just massively buffing all the conduits like I talked about in my last video. So but this is like an extra buff here. Very, very cool for Vesper Totem. Okay, let's talk about Encrypted. This is the final piece that I want to look at today. So, <clears throat> you guys saw in the Mist of Tyrannus side dungeon that I did, we did a plus 15. We had the Encrypted Affix. I'm going to try and do another dungeon today, actually. But we had the Encrypted Affix, and it was very cool. 
And I, I, it was in the dungeon. I didn't quite understand it. I was in the middle of trying a new build, so I didn't explain it very well. Let's explain it well here. So, what is happening? There are three relics. Okay, there's an Ur, there's a Woe, and there's a Vi. Those are the three relics, and they look like this. They're different little shapes, right? So it's a star, a cube, and a sphere. This is a, I don't know what this is. A pointed star? I don't know what this is. Anyway, those are the three. I don't know which name corresponds to which shape, so it'll show you in the game, though. The point is, on a bunch of bosses, like this Mists boss right here, and on a bunch of trash packs, these orbs will be sitting there. These each give you a different buff, okay? They give you this. So if you get the Woe buff, it's 150% movement speed and stealth. That's actually changing. I'll talk about that in a second. If you get the Vi buff, it's 20% haste. That's also changing. And the Ur buff is 25% cooldown reduction, which is also changing. So how do you get these buffs? Well, you kill one of these relics first. They all have very little health, okay? Comparatively speaking to like the other mobs that are nearby, they have like 5% of the health of other mobs that you're killing. So you choose which one you want to kill first. You're like, okay, I want the haste buff. I'm going to go kill the woe relic first. We're going to kill that one. Or if you uh, are running a bunch of classes with big cooldowns that you want to get reduced more quickly, like, okay, we want the uh, the vi relic first. Um, or if you want, if you're if you're just finishing a trash pack. And you're getting a buff. Maybe you can get the movement speed plus stealth, which helps you to skip through packs if you want to, right? So you get to choose which one you want, and you kill that relic first, okay? You kill the the woe relic first. The other two relics are still alive. You're going to kill them afterwards. Once you've killed all three relics, they spawn a bad guy, the Automa. And it'll be, there's a different Automa depending on which one you kill first. So if you kill the woe relic first, you're going to get the woe drifter. If you kill the Ur, you're going to get the Ur guy. They all have different abilities. They're not difficult at all. They're not difficult to kill whatsoever. So what's really cool about this is you get to choose. Do we want haste? Do we want cooldown reduction? Do we need the movement speed and stealth to move past the next pack in the dungeon that we don't want to fight? You know, how do we do that? Um, <clears throat> this also, a quick little side note, is that it's really cool that it allows basically cleave on almost every boss. Because these guys are sitting on every boss, I'm pretty sure as well as other trash packs. So, like, it gives you some AoE cleave on the bosses, which is, like, kind of really cool. It's actually a really neat design. But this is the bottom line how it goes. You kill whichever relic you want first for whichever buff. We want the haste buff. We kill the woe relic. Then we kill the other two relics. They congeal together and form this automa. We kill that woe automa. Then he gives us the haste buff. And then we can roll with it. Okay? That's how it works. That makes sense? Actually, I think what you... The first relic killed will also determine which Atoma you need to fight in order to receive your reward. Yes, once all three relics have been defeated, the relevant Atoma will spawn. They kind of look like this. They're not very deadly, yada, yada, yada. Okay, so that's what happens. It really actually adds a lot, like a new dynamic layer to Mythic Plus. I love this affix. I think it's really cool. I think that the Tormentors were like fine, but this one actually gives you choice. The Tormentors were just like, you're going to kill them all because they have really good buffs. And you get to choose your your buffs. Those did potentially change week to week, but this is like pack to pack. You can make a decision. What do I want? Do I want stealth? Do we need stealth for the next pack? If we don't have a rogue, like we don't have a rogue skip, I don't have invisibility props, whatever, right? That kind of stuff. So that's the basic idea. You kill the relics, you kill whichever one you want first, they form an automa, you kill the automa, you get the buff, you use the buff. Here's the changes that just happened on the PTR yesterday, a couple days ago. This was 23 hours ago, so that was yesterday. <clears throat> Here's the new encrypted um, changes. Let's look at it. Relics associated uh, with which Atoma summoned have been adjusted in an effort to make them more intuitively match the resulting effects. So I guess they wanted to just make it uh, to make it look like, like just so you kind of intuitively understand that if we're killing this Atoma, he looks like the haste one. And so we're going to get the haste buff. I don't really know what that means, but I think that's what it means. Vi's haste reduced by 5%. It was 15, down to 20. That's actually not a big deal. That's not a huge deal. And added an additional effect that deals cosmic damage to the target enemy or healing to the caster's friendly target when triggered. So that's a massive buff. Losing 5% haste, not a big deal. Getting extra damage while the haste buff is rolling, extra healing while the haste buff is rolling, really, really good. Really good. Ur's cooldown reduction has increased to 200% from 25. 
Holy cow. And it restores 10% of your mana every second. That is 10% of your HP and mana every second. Like, this one's crazy. It used to just give 25% cooldown reduction. That's it. Now it gives you 200% cooldown reduction, 10% of your health and your mana every second. Now it only lasts for 10 seconds. The other buffs last for 40 seconds. This used to last for, oh, 45. This used to last for 45 seconds. Now it's 200% cooldown and a huge HP mana regen for 10 seconds. Like, that's a full mana bar, right? And a full health bar, I think? If you get 10% of your mana every second for 10 seconds, that's 100% of your mana. So you're going to get all your mana back. So, like, that's really good for healers. Really, really good for healers. The cooldown reduction is also disgusting. So, like, 200% essentially means that your abilities cool down twice as fast. That's what it means. So, like, <clears throat> if you have a 1-minute cooldown, it's now a 30-second cooldown. That's what it means. So there's some interesting stuff you could do here. And the people who are like doing the all beautiful mind physics stuff up in the sky, like they're going to be able to figure this out. The people who are really, really uh, good with this kind of stuff are going to be able to figure it out. But like warlocks, uh, warlock cooldowns, like big mage cooldowns, like pyroblast and combustion, that kind of stuff. Um, anybody with sort of bigger cooldowns that you can bring down and make them incredibly broken. Meta for Demon Hunter, four minute meta turns into a two minute meta interesting stuff right like it's not quite going to turn into that but this is this is really interesting it, it's all of your cooldowns all of your cooldowns are twice as fast for 10 seconds so like it's just i don't know how that's going to work we're going to have to test it out in the dungeon and see but the restoring 10 percent of your health and mana every second is disgusting really really good the wall relic now also gives you 15 percent damage reduction for the duration of the, of the effect and you auto stealth when you're not in combat and it is uh lasts for 20 seconds so the buff gives you 150% movement speed. Now it gives you 15% damage reduction, and you auto stealth when you're not in combat. Instead of having to like get one stealth when you're done combat, it was really weird the way it was coded before. Now it's completely fixed and better. You get 20 seconds of this buff, so you can like finish off a pack, kill the Automa, and you get 20 seconds of stealth. As soon as you're out of combat, you are stealthed for 20 seconds until you get back into combat. So it allows you to very easily skip whichever packs you're hoping to skip. And it gives you damage reduction, which is no no joke at all. So ultimately, there's like so much flexibility with these affixes. Like you can choose when to engage them. You can choose when to kill them, which gives you your buff. Like when do you want to kill the Atoma? Maybe you want to kill the Atoma here at the beginning of the fight. Just to give your tank 15% damage reduction. You don't even care about the stealth. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe for the Ur cooldown reduction one. Maybe you're just waiting for the perfect moment. And you're like, okay, mage, are you ready? He's like, yes. Okay, okay. We're going to get the... We're going to trigger the death of the Atoma. And then he goes into Pyroblast. He goes into Combustion. And he just goes crazy with his damage. And he gets 200% cooldown reduction. Like, imagine um, Combustion plus Shifting Power... With this cooldown reduction thing, like there's something there, right? There's some really cool builds there, and you can time it appropriately with your team. And then the haste one now just gives you haste and damage and healing. It's just perfect. It's just really strong. This is what you're going to be taking most of the time, I would think, pretty consistently. So this is a huge buff to this affix, which I already thought was exciting and fun, but now it's like, it's it's amazing. Like it's actually amazing. The buffs are very strong i like the direction that they're going i like the choice that you get when you're in the dungeon and when you get to choose to do it you get to decide when you want to engage in the enemies all that kind of stuff is really powerful so there you go guys that's the last piece of news that i wanted to talk about that's kind of the wowhead weekly roundup for me i'm going to keep trying to do these things every couple weeks or so because there's a lot of news that comes out every day and blizzard has gotten a lot better at communicating with us about what is happening on the ptr and what changes they want and they're responding to feedback that we're giving them about how bad tier sets are and stuff like that except for rep paladins rep, rep paladins no i'm just kidding um but we'll see um there's lots of really cool stuff going on so that's that. Flying is better. The uh, encrypted affixes are better. The conduit for Vesper Totem is insane. Elemental Shaman got a little bit of love with the uh, Chain Harvest giving Maelstrom. Um, all the conduits in general are just absolutely bonkers. 
Uh, unlocking flying, like I said, only is going to take three weeks now. So lots of really fun changes happening in the PTR. Um, and hopefully these are all going to translate onto the live server and we're going to have a really wonderful ni patch 9.2. So there you go, guys. I'm going to make another video today talking about Necrolord and the Necrolord AoE build for Enhanced Shaman and the single target build. So stay tuned for those. Thank you so much for watching. If you like what I'm doing here, like and subscribe. I really appreciate it. Really appreciate all the help from you guys. And I um, will see you in the next one.